My name is Ilona Tańska. I'm a researcher at Copernicus Science Center in Warsaw in Poland. My day job is to ask questions and to seek answers. I do this by designing experiments, collecting data, analyzing data and looking for answers to help us to understand the world. I research how people learn daily. How do people know what they know? Inquiry-based learning came to education from laboratories. By applying this method, researchers develop scientific knowledge. Inquiry-based learning at school is a teaching and learning method that encourages students to ask questions and to investigate real-world problems. Today, my real-world problem is the ice and the snow. The inquiry-based learning method typically consists of five stages. That is the experience, asking questions, experimenting, analysis of data and conclusions. In the beginning, there is curiosity and amazement. These feelings are the source of the goals of experimentation. They allow students and teachers the formulation of research questions and hypotheses. What makes the snow to melt faster or slower? Some places are next to each other, like here, and there is snow on some and no snow on others. Ice is similarly mysterious. Sometimes you can see the ice and next to it there is water, no ice. The second stage of the inquiry-based learning method is asking questions. We start by asking questions based on our own experience and curiosity. What kind of questions comes to your mind when you watch the snow or the ice? Why do some materials heat up faster in the summer? Does it mean ice would melt faster on plates that we consider warmer? The third stage of inquiry-based learning method is experimentation and gathering the data. The experimentation is the most favorite for students and for teachers as well. Experimentation is the activity that delivers the data that help us to respond to the research question. On which surface will the ice melt faster? Let's do it together. We can divide a class into several groups each would measure the melting time of the ice man on a metal and wooden plate. We should ask each group to write down the results so they have the data. Now it is a time for the next stage, so the data analysis. We can ask groups to compare their independently obtained results. First, we can focus on comparing the melting time on the ice on different materials. We can also compare the differences in the rate of ice melting between the groups. Are they the same? Fifth stage, the conclusions. Now, based on the analysis, we can conclude. What do we know about the relation between the surface and the ice melting? Let your students think about it. What we learned about this experience and experimenting. After that, there may be even more new questions. But what we have experienced is the complete cycle of the IBL method. We start the work with the curiosity and then we ask questions, we experiment, we discuss the data and we conclude. What students gain within the process is connecting education with the real world and the real experience.
they have opportunity to develop competencies of critical thinking, problem solving, cooperation and communications. They also learn that they, when they make a research, they use instruments. And they build also positive emotions towards learning, towards STEM, towards asking questions, toward, towards being uncertain, and you can make also your own discoveries on how to use IBL method at school. Thank you.